What's going on guys? So in front of you is our brand new 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali pickup truck with the three liter new generation Duramax inline six engine. And what we're gonna do in this video is something a lot of folks have been asking about, and that is to go over line by line the uh, Moroni sticker or the window sticker for this specific truck. What better place to do that than on the multi-pro tailgate of the truck itself? All right, so we have the original window sticker right here. We're gonna go through all the specs and features line by line to show you what this 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali is all about. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is a pretty requested video from folks who've been emailing me, posting some comments and uh, asking me about this new truck. So again, 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali. First of all, we got the exterior in the onyx black, interior in jet black. This has the Duramax three liter turbo diesel engine with the 10 speed automatic transmission. Going through the owner benefits, three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper limited warranty, five year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty with roadside assistance and courtesy transportation. First maintenance visit is included. Under safety and security, this has a GMC Pro Safety, which includes the automatic emergency braking, forward collision alert, front pedestrian braking. And um, it's interesting where it says front pedestrian braking braking. I don't know if that's a typo or not. Lane keep assist with lane departure warning, following distance indicator, and telebeam high, auto high beam, which means your high beams are gonna come on and off automatically depending on the road you're on, if there's any cars coming towards you. I'm not a big fan of that feature, honestly. I usually shut it off or find a way to turn it off in any vehicle I own because it, it kind of drives me nuts. And what I've already found out about this truck is if you use that feature, um, it'll come on and you can't quickly disable it by just pulling the high beam stock. Um, I did find out that the button to turn it on and off is actually at the end of that uh, of your turn signal stock, which is really nice. So it's really easy to disable, which I tend to do. Front and rear parking assist. So it has parking sensors on the front and rear. Has the trailer side blind zone alert, um, which is pretty cool. So I guess it gives you blind spot notification on your trailer um, whenever you're towing. Uh, rear cross traffic braking. Uh, so essentially if you're in a parking lot backing up and a vehicle's coming down that parking lot, it'll automatically break your vehicle if it seems like a collision is going to happen. A rear pedestrian alert, a safety alert seat. So it basically vibrates if it sets off any of these collision avoidance things or cross path detection stuff. High definition surround vision with bed view, basically part of your camera system. Tire pressure monitoring with tire fill alert. So I don't really know what that means. I haven't had a chance to, to specifically see what happens. I'm guessing that when your tires get to a certain level um, of air pressure loss, it'll actually notify you that you need to fill your tire up. I really don't know how that's much different than just having a tire pressure alert you know, go off on you, but maybe it is, we'll find out. Under performance and mechanical, has the auto locking rear differential the Denali premium suspension with adaptive ride control. This is actually pretty cool. And you know, for a long time, I thought it was a bit gimmicky, but now that I've driven the truck for a little while and I've gone over some really rough roads, I'm gonna tell you that uh, that, that adaptive ride control is actually pretty dang cool. It has a 120 volt bed power outlet, two speed auto track transfer case, stability track with trailer sway control and hill start assist has the trailering package. And I think that trailering package is just standard equipment on the Denali. I, I could be wrong. There could be some other package that our Denali has that's not outlined here that just includes that. But yeah, it has a trailer package, trailer brake controller integrated in already. Under connectivity and technology, it has a 13.4 inch diagonal color touch screen, GM premium infotainment system with Google built-in compatibility, wireless Android auto, wireless Apple CarPlay for compatible phones in-vehicle trailering app, three years of GMC connected services. That's actually pretty cool. The fact that they include its connected services for three years is awesome. Uh, Bose premium sound system. You know, what was funny is uh, I actually didn't even know it had the Bose sound system. I was looking at most of the speakers and some of them just are blank. They don't say anything. And you see the Bose marking on two of the speakers on the doors. And that's kind of the thing that clued me off, but I didn't know. OnStar services and Wi-Fi hotspot capable. Sirius XM radio, trials included. 12.3 inch diagonal digital driver information system. Keyless open and remote start. Wireless charging. 
Let's see here. And I really don't use wireless charging. I know a lot of folks probably absolutely love wireless charging, but the reason why I don't is I use magnetic mounts on my phones, so I really can't take advantage of the fact that they all can be wirelessly charged because I am covering up that sensor. Okay, now going over the interior section, dual zone climate control, 10-way power front bucket seats. My wife really appreciates having the power front seats. Heated front and rear outer seats, ventilated front seats, power steering column, um, it has a power steering column, but it does not have power pedals. So it would be really nice if I could control the pedals. That's a big one, um, and it's a big miss. I really, really wish that this truck had the ability for you to move your pedals forward and back to adjust for different folks. Rear 6040 folding bench seat with storage package. So yeah, you basically have this little storage bin underneath the seat. Um, I'm going to tell you it's smaller than I was hoping it would be. It's significantly smaller than what's in a Ford product if you get it with the storage under the seat. And I haven't really been able to find a lot of options that I really love. Most of them are some type of a plastic blow mold material and just the, the shell of the storage compartment takes up so much room. It's like an inch and a half thick and you lose a lot of interior space. That's why I like the Ford system so well is because the actual storage system is really thin. It's only about a half an inch thin and it gives you a lot of room that isn't sacrificed just because of the design of the storage tray itself. Okay, driver's seat and mirror memory. So it does not have passenger seat memory, which I do wish it had. It has only driver's seat memory. Uh, steering wheel wrapped and heated. That is nice. Uh, they put the heated button on the steering wheel too, which is different than how Ford does it. Ford and Ram put it on the center, or at least some area near your navigation screen. On the GM, it's, uh, it's actually on the steering wheel. Okay, exterior. Chrome assist steps. So uh, basically it has running boards. This does not have the electric deploying running boards, which is completely fine for me. Um, the truck doesn't sit up nearly as high as say my F450. So you really don't need them to deploy like you might on my truck, on my red truck. And on this truck, again, uh, even though we own this truck, the running boards are perfectly fine. I don't think I would swap those out with electric or, or automatic deploying running boards. LED cargo area lighting and that's pretty nice. So it's basically lighting into the bed area. Spray and bed liner with logo. GM Multi-Pro tailgate. That's gonna be really interesting one for me to test and evaluate. It's gonna be really, really interesting to see how I feel about it and how often I use it because I use the step on the Ford truck or on my Ford truck all the time. It's uh, so easy to deploy, use, and then throw back in, into the tailgate when you're done. Um, it does add a significant amount of weight to the tailgate but the bulk and everything of the multi-pro tailgate, it's gonna be really interesting to see how much I actually use that, especially considering the fact that the hitch I currently have in the truck isn't really compatible with it. So I'd have to remove the hitch to use the multi-pro tailgate. And that could be a big pro or it could be a big con. I'm definitely gonna let you know how I feel about that because uh, I think you all wanna to know too, because that you know you hear a lot of, a lot of marketing around the multi-pro tailgate for both the GMC and the Chevy product. Uh, power folding and heated mirrors with auto dim. That's very nice. LED headlamps and tail lamps, LED daytime running lights, LED fog lamps. Uh, the lighting on this truck is superior to that of my F450, hands down. It's superior to that of the standard LED package you can get on an F150 as well. Um, and it's much better, of course, than the halogen package that you get on the standard model half-ton F-150 truck uh, before you get to LEDs. But as far as the new Super Duty, I've had several opportunities to drive those trucks, and I'd say the headlights are pretty much on par. It uses this interesting kind of dual projector design, which is all built into a really small housing up front. But they're very, very good headlights, great cutoff beam, a lot of light output, definitely like them. Dual exhaust with premium tips. Very, very nice exhaust. The exhaust looks great. I think because I have the baby Duramax, it may not sound as impressive as it looks, but it definitely looks really good. Looks really clean, especially kind of integrated in under the bumper. Okay, now we're gonna go over options and pricing, but before we get there, standard vehicle price is equipped, $67,100. Now options and pricing. So this truck comes equipped with the technology package. It was an $1,840 package. 
which includes a rear view camera mirror. So that's the mirror up front, your rear view mirror, which is actually a camera. I have actually grown to like that a lot because we have a child seat in the center of the second row and the headrest of that child seat pretty much blocks any rear visibility out the back window, except for the small little areas between it and the normal headrests of the back seat. And you just don't have a lot of visibility. So having that camera rear view mirror has actually been really nice. Now the downside to it is if there's a vehicle behind you and it has LED lights, sometimes it makes those LED lights through the mirror look like they're strobing. So I actually had a, I think it was a Mitsubishi that was behind me and it actually looked like it was a police vehicle because the camera was making the headlights or at least it was picking up the frequency of the headlights and they looked like they were strobing in the camera. So that was kind of interesting. Multicolor 15 inch diagonal heads up display. So the HUD on this vehicle is pretty cool. Um, it can get really bright and it can get kind of like right in your face too if you raise it up high enough. I like it, um, but I don't use it that often. I kind of avoid looking at it to be honest. The only time I look at it is when I can't see something on the dash layout or at least the gauge cluster, which is also a screen. But I guess it's pretty cool. I mean, it does come in handy occasionally if you wanna quickly glance down and just see how fast you're going. And I like that it gives you the actual posted speed limit as well. So you have an opportunity to see if you are speeding, which is really nice. Adaptive cruise control, which is really nice. You would just assume though, that the adaptive cruise control would be kind of coupled into the safety system over here. Uh, because it all uses essentially the same cameras, right? A lot of the same technology. But the adaptive cruise control really is the ability for you to get behind a vehicle or set a certain speed, and then it adapts to whatever speed the vehicles in front of you may be going. So you set your distance, and if you come up to a vehicle that's going significantly slower than you, the vehicle or this truck will slow down to match that speed and then give you the distance that you're looking for based on your settings. Power sunroof, uh, I didn't really care about that. It was a $1,000 option or $995 option. It had it. Um, it's kind of one of those things you just take it or leave it because you don't have a lot of choice when it comes to getting these trucks. So this specific truck had the sunroof. I kind of wish it didn't because if it didn't have the sunroof, that's one area that I would have saved a lot of weight and it would have been invested back into the truck in terms of payload capacity. So yeah, the sunroof is definitely one of the things that can add quite a bit of weight to the truck in terms of uh, how much it weighs from a curb weight perspective, and that's gonna drop your cargo capacity quite a bit. Engine, Duramax, three liter turbo diesel, also roughly a thousand dollar upcharge. So yeah, this has the second generation. I don't know if you wanna really call it that since it's a, a pretty significant departure in design, but it has the new three liter turbo diesel engine. This is really the catalyst behind this specific truck and why so many people wanted me to specifically get this truck is because of that diesel engine with the 10 speed automatic transmission. Um, I heard that the 2021 20, and 22 diesel was actually a pretty dang reliable engine, that it was a really, really rock solid three liter diesel. Um, but I know that there were some, some changes made to the 2023 um, in terms of oil capacity and some other things as well. And we'll try to dive into that a little bit more. Maybe I can interview a, a GM engineer to specifically see what some of those differences are. But I'm sure there's a lot of content on that already from other YouTubers. So I may create some of my own or uh, you may just wanna go watch some of that stuff. All right. So three years OnStar safety and security package, $905. So yeah, it's kind of one of those things where they said it was included, but I actually paid $905 more to have three years of all those services included. And I believe that even includes the Wi-Fi hotspot service because that's what I was told from the dealership. Onyx Black paid almost $500 for the color. And honestly, it's probably not the color I would have picked had there been more inventory available. Black and Denali just kind of go, you know, synonymously together because Denali pickup trucks look absolutely amazing in black. But down here in South Texas, black means you're roasting inside of your truck, even when it's not a very hot day. Um, I kind of would have wanted the white truck, but I just couldn't find one. And there wasn't anything directly available that wasn't already spoken for. Uh, and I probably would have had to, you know, really, really search far and wide to find that truck. And it, I could have actually lost the opportunity to get this truck. So I didn't want to do that. Okay. Steering column lock. So I got a credit because it's not equipped with the steering column lock. I'm sure that's a supply chain issue thing. They gave me a $50 credit because of that. So, you know, who knows really if, uh, if that's something I needed. 
Gross vehicle weight rating, 7,200 pounds. So I know that there is a high capacity payload version of this truck. And I believe the only difference in gross vehicle weight rating is 100 pounds. I believe it's 7,300 pounds. You get 100 extra pounds of cargo capacity if you opt for that specific upgrade, which this truck doesn't have. But it does have the trailering features. It has all of that stuff. And if I did not have the sunroof, I'd probably get that 100 pounds back. But I have the sunroof, so... Again, you, you win some, you lose some in terms of features. Rear axle ratios is a 3.23. Uh, that is not the ideal towing ratio, but that is going to definitely be a little better for fuel economy. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what type of fuel economy I get with this truck. Now, I would definitely want to find out what the difference is whenever you compare this to a lower gear ratio. Um, and I know it really doesn't impact towing that much. It, it's a bit of an impact, but it's only like a couple hundred pounds. But I'd definitely be interested to find out what the differences are with the different rear end ratios. This has the 20 inch multi-dimensional wheels on it. I love the look of the wheels on this truck. I think they look very good. They look very Denali, if that makes sense. They look like the type of wheel you'd want on a Denali. So the total options on this truck add up to $5,180. The total vehicle and options is $72,280. And the destination charge, which is essentially delivery, that's that freight delivery or however they get it to the dealership of $1,795, gives you a grand total of $74,075. Now, real quick RV comparison, the delivery charge or freight charge you see on RVs would be the same charge as a destination charge you see on a vehicle. All right, now let's go over safety. So this truck has a five-star overall crash rating, frontal crash driver, five-star, frontal crash passenger, four-star, side crash for front and rear seats is five-star, and rollover is four-star. Typically on pickup trucks, rollover is where most trucks are going to suffer. Moving over here, fuel economy. So this is from an EPA rating perspective. City, 22 miles per gallon, highway, 27 miles per gallon, combined, 24 miles per gallon. Now, this number right here is, has been widely tested by a lot of automotive journalists. And some folks have gotten well over 30 miles per gallon with this new 3-liter diesel engine. And I even think they've gotten close to that, if not around that, with the previous 3-liter diesel engine. So that's pretty cool. They say you'll spend about $2,000 more in fuel costs over five years compared to an average new vehicle. Um, that is based on all vehicles. So it's not just really based on just this one vehicle compared to another pickup truck. And in reality, you actually will save some money over a gas equipped truck just because of the fuel economy differences here. Let me give you an example. If you look at a typical 5.3 liter V8 equipped truck, or you look at even some of the other V8s from other manufacturers like, like Ford and Ram, you know, they're getting like 16 to 21 miles per gallon. So if you can get roughly five to 10 miles per gallon more with this truck, even though you pay a lot more for diesel, you're actually gonna be saving in the long run. So it's always worth considering getting something with super high fuel economy if it's gonna save you, even though the, the fuel itself might actually be more expensive. Anyways, that is it. That is the window sticker for our new 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali pickup truck. Please leave a comment below. I'm sure a lot of you have been commenting as you've been going over this and you've been seeing the specs. Um, pricing, yeah, $74,075. We got 1500 bucks in discounts off of that price. And uh, we traded the Ford Explorer in and we financed the difference. Uh, we'll have the vehicle for probably about a year, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. I guess it really depends on how we're doing with this vehicle and what we think of it. But at the end of the day, you know, we wanted to get a vehicle that we could definitely do some really cool testing over a longer period of time, put some miles on it, and really use it as a truck. So I know a lot of folks are interested in these trucks. They definitely are interested in this new 3-liter a Duramax turbo diesel and 10 speed automatic transmission. So we're definitely going to give you our honest feedback and uh, our evaluation of how this truck performs over that period of time. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.